Happy to be joined by the man who's going to be headlining UFC 300 against Alex Pereira. It is Jamal Hill, Sweet Dreams, back here on the program. Jamal, how are you? Good, hey, brother. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, did you ever think in your wildest dreams you'd be headlining the biggest card in UFC history? I mean, this is a huge deal for you. I mean, like back last year, before, I, like whenever I first got hurt, I was like, oh, UFC 300 is coming up. It'd be cool to fight on that and everything like that for uh, for obvious reasons of the pay-per-view numbers and stuff like that. But once I started dealing with the injury and started putting together my schedule on time to return, no, I didn't think I was going to headline UFC 300. Take me through that phone call of them offering you the main event. They put it together the day before um, the day before the announcement. I um, I was in my hotel room. I went out to Anaheim to uh, to watch the fights. You know, I got I've, I've gotten I've gotten a, built a really good relationship with the Georgian with the Georgian fighters. You know, Marab started all with Marab and uh, Elia Elia now and uh, Roman Delite and those guys. So I um, I went out there to support to uh, to show some support. You know, plus you know I'm a fan. I'm a fan, of course. I'm a fan of Volk, you know, and I got I got love for the city kickboxing guys too, also. But um, I was just out there for the I was out there for the fights, and um, I was in my hotel room about to go downstairs to take one of my take one of my walks, and I got the call. He was like, "Hey, are you by yourself? I need to talk to you. It's really important." Um, yeah, I just need you to get back with get get with me, and uh, just was really top, like really super secretive. And um, just essentially just ask, hey, we want, we want to we want to do you versus Alex. I know you. We were looking at doing it in Brazil, but uh, how you feeling about uh, headlining UFC 300? You know, I told him I get with my team, get with my people, make sure everything was uh was in line to be okay to work out. And we did it. Who was the first person you told about the news? Because again, this is a huge deal. Coach, I call, I call, I call. I don't, I don't, I don't accept anything. I don't accept anything or uh, move forward anything without my team, without my whole team on, on board. So I get with my whole, I get with my team. We uh, we come together, and make sure everything is lined up with everybody, and uh, we make, and we rock from there. And you gotta love the fact that you don't have to go to Brazil and fight him in his backyard, right? I mean, it, you've you've been to Vegas. You're you're in Vegas now. You've been doing a lot of training there. You rehab. In some ways, this is almost a home game for you a little bit. I actually haven't been in Vegas. I've been, I'm uh, well, I'm not in Vegas now. I, I've oh, okay. Been, I'm in I'm in Michigan right now. You know, I do my camps. In, uh, in Michigan, so I'll, I'll be. I've, I started my camp out in Vegas, and then I moved it back home to Michigan. You know, just for familiarity, and you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I've I've, I've done all my camps here, and uh, I feel I feel that was the best move. Were you sort of planning to come back and fight on the 301 card, like in terms of a timetable before 300 happened? I guess the reason I ask is because you know you're dealing with the injury. Was this kind of the ideal time to come back, or was it maybe a little bit too soon? Like, like what was sort of your reaction as far as your recovery from your injury? To be honest with you, when I say I was scheduling out and it wasn't scheduled for me to come back for 300, the schedule was for UFC 301. Uh, 301. That was right. what that's that's what the target was. That's been the target since like the day after he won the title. Mm -hmm. You know, instantly, like, how do you feel about how do you feel about uh, May? We're looking at Brazil. You know, that was a that was a conversation at first, and then it was just just all right. Get ready, just start, uh, just basically, just finishing out my rehab, finishing out my rehab, make sure I was feeling good. I started turning things up and uh, tuning things up, and I was actually gonna start my camp uh, the beginning of March anyway. But whenever I got this call, it was just like, all right. Only thing that only thing that changed was we just started camp a couple weeks early. Right. Okay. When did you have that conversation about potentially being on 301? Was that like close to when you found out about the fight or like, take me through that. Um, the first of all, I first found that they wanted to, I wanted me to do, uh, you do us in, in Brazil at UFC 300. That was about, that was the day. That was the day after, uh, after he fought Yuri, after he won the belt. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So even back then you kind of had an idea of, you know, the timeline, right? Right after the fight, right after the fight. I text, um, I text Hunter. I was like, "Yo, I text Hunter. I'm like, and I'm like, yo, you don't, he don't, you don't give him to nobody but me. <laughs> like, I want him. Give, give, let me have him. Give him to nobody, nobody else but me. You know what I mean? So uh, when I asked that, he was like, uh, and that's when he brought it up. That's when he's like, hey, so what do you think? We're, we're looking at maybe possibly Brazil. So they were, um, that was already an idea that was kind of in play. Then at the beginning of. Um, He's like, we'll review, we'll get with the team. I did a little bit more rehab. It took a little, about another four weeks. He's like, all right, this is what we're looking at. And then he told me at like beginning of January, that's what we was looking oh, at. Oh, so plenty of time then. Okay, yeah, I was, just, I was just curious about that, if this was like a little, little bit closer or whatever, that, that certainly makes sense. 
towards coming back. I was already gearing towards and working my way towards being back in action. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense for sure. If you're sort of looking at this matchup from a very simplistic point of view, it's just two strikers going at it. How do you look at this fight? Do you look at it deeper than that as far as, you know, how, how, this, how you match up against him? I feel like I match up very well against him. I feel like that everything, I feel like I'm just better. Like I, I've said it in multiple interviews. People just don't believe me. I'm I am I am truly just better than he is. Period. That's just the way, that's just the way it is. I'm better than him everywhere. Um and I don't want to keep saying it. I just want to get out there and show it. Yeah. Uh he's it's not gonna go well for him. It's not gonna go well for him. I, that's why I'm 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 loving all the talk. I'm loving all the talk, all the hype, the the prayer is this and the 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 myth the mythical, all of that shit. I'm loving all of that shit. Build him up in y'all heads as big as y'all want to. So whenever I lay him out. Y'all know what y'all 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 know y'all know how much further y'all really need to start start trying to put together where who where I am and what I isn't this kind of cool as well that like you know and, and I want to take credit for 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 this like you know a couple of years back but we did an interview a little while ago and you had mentioned prayer when he wasn't even in the weight class and you talked about you know come on up or whatever do you feel like that also helped get this fight as well because people are excited about this even before you two were in this position to fight each other this is a fight people wanted to see how much do you think sort of you being honest about prayer and a potential matchup sort of helped build up the hype for this fight. It's Mystic Mall, man. Come on, man. I speak all <laughs> into existence. You know, um, at the, just to drop another one, don't forget about the Paula Costa one. I still ain't gave up. I think Paula Costa right. at this point might, might actually try to make a run at 205. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see if he does end up moving up. Um, so talk to me a bit about camp. Uh, you're back home. Who are you getting to work with? Is it pretty much business as usual or anything different for this camp as far as training partners and, and everything else? It's business as usual. I started out out of extreme couture. You know, um, I've, I've gotten uh, built a real good relationship with some of the guys over there and, and uh, with Coach Nixick. So he opened the uh, he opened up the doors to me like, hey, I know you're out here. You, I know you need recovery. You need to get work. Hell, even if you just want to come in and be around the gym environment and the culture of just, I mean, just putting in the work in and being around some of the guys. Uh, he invited me to come in. I went in and uh, I was I was getting work in. I was sparring with, uh, I've sparred with, with, the, with the wealth of the guys there from, from, uh, from Sean to Kurt to Chris to uh, Spivak in in uh, um, Kutalaba, Kutalaba, yeah, Kutalaba, uh, Pereira, um, Bahalio. I've gotten around. I've gotten around and got some work in with a bunch of with some with a bunch of guys over out there. Uh, really good guys. I, I went and got some work in with Chidi and Kawani. You know, he's got really good Muay Thai. I'm really good Muay Thai style. Um, I've gotten some. I've gotten surrounded with some really good guys. I got. I got a couple of my guys that I like to use from Michigan that that have come out that are that are some dogs. They like to get in. They they, they don't mind getting in the fire and uh, and putting some work in. Speaking of dogs, Brett Martin in the gym at all, or you've been working with him? Same, Brett. Uh, big dog has been. Big dog has been in the gym. Um, he's he's here. He's here with me. He's rocking out to the camp. He's actually fighting the same night here in Michigan. Okay. As I so, uh, so he's got that. He's got that coming up, and we uh, we just grinding out, getting getting each other ready for the thirteenth. For sure, I imagine Ankle Live wasn't there at Extreme when when you were there at the time, because I know he does do some training there. No, he wasn't there. Okay, because no, I was gonna say that's a potential opponent, right down the line too. I don't know if you'd want to be be training with him at all, right? I mean, I'm not not for that reason, but just more so because of the simple fact that he's a dickhead. Why is he a, a dickhead? This is the first I've heard of this. He is a dickhead, dude. Just the shit that he just, just the way, just the way he thinks and the shit he says. You know what I'm saying? He's do you like, mean like on social media or like, like how, how do you mean? He does a lot of talking shit on social media. He'll mention me in tweets, but he's got me blocked, so I was, so I wasn't able to tag him or, or actually. Well, see hold him. on a second. Do you think that's him or that's his manager? Because you know his manager does kind of take over his accounts and uh, you know his fighters' accounts and says stuff, right? manager or not they speaking for you as a representative so i'm taking that to you that's a bitch move to me so i'm gonna treat you like I, i'm that's how i'm gonna look at you. you let somebody run your account like a bitch you're okay with being looked at like a bitch right okay no no i get it like i understand you being upset for sure because uh i mean no one wants to be, be talked about what? that's not me being upset i don't care well not I don't... upset but like you just mentioned like he was mentioning you in tweets or whatever right that's what i'm getting at yeah, I don't get, I'm not upset by his tweets. I don't get upset. I really don't get upset by this shit. This shit has done nothing but made me money. Yeah, sorry. The uh, upset was the wrong word. Catch your attention, I, I guess would be the better word here, right? People talking online, all of that shit, me interacting back, all that. This has done nothing but made me money. So I don't 
not upset. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not. No, no, I, I get it, man. I get it for sure. De definitely catching your attention, though, for sure. Like I mentioned, uh, how's the weight cut going? I know when you've been off for a while, it's sometimes tougher to cut those pounds. How's all that going uh, ahead of the fight? Oh, we don't have, we don't have, we don't, we don't have problems like that over here, over here, James. We put, I put in too much work to worry about, worry about things like that. That take care of itself. Okay. Plus, you know, I got my, I got my, I got the, I got the weapon. I got the secret weapon here. Let's see here it. Right now, as we speak, he in the lab. Oh, of it, course. The best it, in the business. What's up, Ian? Man, What's up, brother? How are you? We Good. Got the, we got the goat in here working right now. You know, the, the, the team is the team is here. We in full force and full gear. We, we getting everything. We getting it all in line, bro. It's all coming together beautiful. So he's staying with you for the whole camp or just part of camp? Nah, he here until, he's here until the fight. He uh he came out with, you got here, what, about a week, a couple weeks ago? Yeah, a week and a half. About a week and a half, two weeks ago, so. He'll be here for about five weeks, so I got him for five weeks. So Big Dog won't be in your corner. Who's going to be in the cage with you for the big title fight? Same guys. You know what I mean? My coaches my coaches will be in there. Yeah, same coaches. How's this fight playing out? I think I know the answer, but I got to ask anyways. I don't think this is hitting the scorecards. Nah, bro. I'm knocking him the f*** out. I'm not even. It's like, there's no, like, and it's, and, and, and when I say this, right, this is no disrespect to Alex. You know what I mean? The prayer, or however you take it. That's however you take it, it's however you take it. But at the end of the day, for me, there's no disrespect. I like Alex. I, I like Alex. I like Alex whenever he fights. I think he's funny. I think um I think I think he adds, I think he brings brings uh attention and a good energy and good charisma and good good things to the to the sport and to the company and to, to all of us as a whole that that are that are in this that are in this lane. But um just the way I see the fight, whenever I started to break it down, the more I started to lock in and I started to get off into my thing, I started to round into form, I realized the mismatch, the mismatch, it truly, truly is. It's truly, truly a mismatch. You know, can he catch me? Can he catch me and knock me out? He's been fighting for a long time. He he, he has he has strikes. He has power. Yes, it's a possibility to get caught and lose. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. But short of that, short of him actually something, something getting through and it catch me and just putting me away he gets his ass whooped every single way every single way he has one way to win this fight one way yeah. he's not gonna anybody who thinks he's gonna outclass me is out of their f***ing mind he has one way to win this fight yeah yeah i completely agree um we mentioned him earlier is ankle live getting the winner of this fight do you think i don't know we, we'll see we'll see um um, I know the Yuri. I know the Yuri in the um, Rackage. Rackage fight is on there, and um, uh, being on the being on the being on the uh, being on this card gets sets the sets the potential to for anybody to to to, to explode. Right, mm -hmm. it's a card. A lot of eyes are gonna be on it, and they could explode if he goes out and knocks and starches Rackage and just you know what I mean, and starts to blow up and buzzing right there. That's a strong case for me. Yeah. Yeah, understand. Do you think do you think he does that in that fight? Because Rakic, I think people forget Rakic hasn't fought since the injury against Jan Blahovic, right? You're supposed to fight Jan in Toronto. Jan can't fight, so now they move it to 300. So Rakic is going to be coming off a pretty long layoff fighting Yuri. How do you think that one plays out? I think because of that, he has a chance to. But bro, Rakic is like no wrong. Like I said, like I said in an interview with you, I believe it was. Hmm. I like he's boring as fuck to watch. He's boring as fuck, but he knows how to win. He knows how to win fights. He's explosive. He's got he's got he's got uh pause. He's got good size, and he just um he just knows how to win, dude. He's he's uh, he's athletic. He just yeah, bro. So you you think Rakic beats Yuri, or do you think Yuri will get the better of him? If I was if I was if obviously we're not allowed to bet on it, but if I was ever if I was gonna put my money, I think I'd be more comfortable sliding my money towards Rakic than Yuri. Is is that just because of the defense for Yuri that he you know he does get hit a lot or what what's the reason? It's he's it's the defense, it's the fight IQ, it's you know what I'm saying? I think I think Rackage is the smarter fighter. I think if either one of if one of them if they have to come out and start making adjustments, I think there will be times where they have to make adjustments. They're gonna have to adjust to each other's game, and I'm willing to bet Rackage makes better adjustments. <laughs> All right, I got some fun questions for you. We always talk about fighting. I want to ask you a couple of questions outside of fighting that are just fun and they're easy to answer and there's no wrong answers here because it's just an opinion. Uh, they're called rapid fire questions. Jamal Hill, what is, who's your favorite athlete outside of combat sports? LeBron James. Who's, what's your favorite movie? 
Oh, favorite movie, dude. That's that's a that's a tough one. I got I got I have a I have a collection of. of well, what's the that... first one that comes to your mind when I say that? Uh, Troy. Favorite actor or actress? Denzel. Uh, favorite TV show? Like currently or like of all time? Doesn't matter. Either or. I'd have to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to do a drop on you of between Game of Thrones, 24, and who? Yeah, Game of Thrones, 24. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with those two. I'm I was gonna, go gonna with those. say, yeah, you had two good ones right there. Who? I, I, I got some. I think I got some other. I just can't think of it right off. No, no, those are great answers. I mean, that's yeah. Th those are both good shows. Uh, favorite comedian. Favorite comedian Dave Chappelle. Favorite cheat meal. Favorite cheat meal cookies. Favorite travel destination. Favorite travel destination. Right, right now, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I haven't really been many places uh, outside of the country. I'm gonna say Brazil because that's the place that I've been and I loved Brazil. But in uh, stateside, I might have to go with Scottsdale, Arizona. Great choice. Uh, favorite animal. Lion. Uh, what's your hidden talent? What is my hidden talent? My hidden talent is that I'm good at everything. What is your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve, stupid people. Okay, I'll accept that. Um, I imagine after this, again, like we got to see how the fight goes and figure everything out. But uh, I imagine you want to keep active, right? Just because I know, um, not, not that you need to rush back into something, but I know a lot of fighters like to fight three times a year. Is that kind of what you're looking at? We're going uh, to see. We're going to see. Um, the, you know, right now, my biggest focus is getting through this fight. And um, yeah, because I know what, what uh, this is just one of those fights that is just like, it's just such a big fight. It changes a lot, you know. A lot can change with the uh, with, with the performance that I plan on having on uh, April thirteenth. So we'll have to see. Would you ever, if you had a preference, would you rather have a fight in Detroit or have a fight in Chicago? Chicago. Okay, because I know you're born there, but obviously live in Michigan, so I wasn't sure which one would hold uh, hold allegiance. But Chicago, because they haven't been back to Chicago, I don't think since Valentina and Jessica I, I think, right? Nope, no, they haven't. Um, no, nah, but. Chicago, Chicago for me will be because more of uh, more of my family, more of my family lives there. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad and my mom's side, both of them, like all my, like my, like most of my, pretty much my, the core of my family lives in, lives in Chicago. And Chicago is the same, is pretty much the same distance from Grand Rapids as, as it is to Detroit. Yeah. So I agree. Like, they yeah. love that. Michigan would flood the ground, would flood, to, would flood to Chicago also. That's true. You know? Yeah, they're, they're close to each other. Um, something we kind of referenced earlier, and I know uh, you've been very active on social media, maybe not as much now, but what do you make of people being disrespectful to fighters? This is something you and I have talked about even like privately. Like I find that it's getting worse. Like I think a lot of fans are just casually throwing stuff out at fighters, and then when they respond, oh, you're angry, you're mad. Like, Don't you find that part of the culture kind of really annoying Like to just, just to see on a regular basis? Yeah, yeah, it is annoying. Like at first, at first, like whenever I first came in, it was, it was kind of funny. You know, you kind of, you kind of do, you kind of poke in, you have a little fun with it. But like after a while, it's just like the more like you like, all right, you start to accomplish, and you start to, and it's just people just trying to shit on everything that you accomplished yeah. and everything. And it's just like, it's just like, like, what are you doing with your life that to where you at in your life to where this is what you need to focus all this time and energy on is trying to bring somebody else down from their moments. Me personally, I, I really do handle these type, these type of things well, because I can talk, I can, I can talk my shit. I'll deal with it. Like, well, I, I can, I can actually, it's actually playful banter with me. But whenever, whenever I turn my phone off and I log off the app, that's it for me. I don't like, I don't care. You know, uh, my life, my life is always everything. Everything in my life has always been based off of results. You know, um, no matter how good I thought I was or where I thought I was with this, if I wasn't producing results, it never got anywhere with me. And the results in my life and what is produced and what has become of my life is great it's nothing short of amazing i'm accomplishing all of my dreams i sit back and i was just sitting back the other day just thinking like um like i was like whenever i was a kid it was like this it was this time i remember thinking when i was a kid like i want to be a professional athlete i want to make shit. i want to make a lot of money 
I want to, uh, I want to be able to take care of my people. I want to not have to worry about this. I want to be able to travel and go see, I can do all of those things. I can do all of, I've done all of those things, you know? So yeah, bro. So for when somebody comes along and try to speak on, speak on, speak on me and that aspect, it's just kind of, I think it's a generation thing. Like I think, and I think the pandemic made things worse. Not, I mean, we could do a whole show on this, but basically I think a lot of people have just become like used to just casually being disrespectful to people and kind of tying into the same thing here. Um, you mentioned Sean Strickland, you used to train with him. What did you make of Sneeko wanting to spar with him? Because I think this also speaks to the culture of that. Anyone can do fighting and they step in. And then here's the other thing that annoyed me about that whole Sneeko thing. You've seen what Sean Strickland does to people when you spar with them, right? Like he's not going to go easy. So all these people are like, Sean's in the wrong. I'm like, yeah, but you know what Sean's about. Are you jumping in like a bull ring with like a red cape? What's going to happen? You're going to get hit. Yeah, and the bull flips you on your neck. What do you expect? That's what I, as I took it as just another dude, a, a lesson learned. I mean, challenge this guy. You went there. You tried to sack up and show your manhood, and you saw what it was really worth. And now people are upset because it made them feel inferior. That's one thing that I'm learning. That's a lot of things in this culture. People don't like things that make them feel inferior. You know? And um, a lot of people are looking like, damn, he just, what, what could he do to me? You know, and things like that. And it makes them, it makes them feel, it makes them feel a certain type of way. Um, if you're going to challenge a professional fighter, that'd be like if me, me going, me going, going and challenging Steph Curry, like, Hey, yo, Steph, I got a, I got a quarter million dollars. Let's bet. Let's bet that I, I bet that I'll make more three pointers than you. And he fries my ass. You know what I mean? And he fries me. and I lose my quarter million dollars. Whose fault is that? Yeah, exactly. Who he was whenever I challenged him? I knew who he was when I challenged him. So, it's, yeah, that 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 whole thing, that whole thing's crazy. And then a lot of people, a lot of people try to make Sean out to be like people don't know Sean in person. If you ever actually talked to Sean or sat down with Sean in person, like he's one of the most respectful, like straightforward, honest people that you know that you that you that you that you that you'll, that you'll encounter. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Most of the time when people are getting off on these bad, bad ticks and shit, like it's some shit that they doing. This is going to be an awesome card, Jamal. Again, congrats on getting the, uh, the main event spot. Uh, we're looking forward to it. If there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention your YouTube channel. I'll give you the last word. Hey, you know, you can catch me on my YouTube channels. Uh, just type in Jamal Hill on YouTube. It's the champ chat podcast, word council. I stream all my kind con- a lot of my, uh, most of my long, uh, long form content. Is uh is film is is shot on on my YouTube. I got my my Instagram my Instagram page uh, sweet underscore dream underscore J Hill. Uh, Twitter TikTok Jamal H. Yeah, those. Um, you know, I, I, I was always a shout out to my team at the Black Lion Academy. Shout out to uh Lynn, Lynn, uh Ian Larios. You know the chef. I got my team. I got my team here. My uh my girl. You know, of course Adair. She she she's uh she was the one she was actually i definitely got to give a shout out to her because whenever i got hurt she was the person that dropped everything and came out to where i was and was with me day to day making sure i had everything i needed while i recovered in this process and things like that so it's a huge shout out love and respect to her and um yeah bro just my team my coaches my people i got my guys here with me right now and um yeah it's a it's a i'm very i'm very very team oriented with the people that are that uh that sacrifice for me and pour into me and things like that and I try to make sure I'm there and I do the same for them.